break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As beside the sea. It's at the back of your outline. Sense the one. Breathe. As thou didst breathe the news beside the sea. Stands a warn everybody. Stanza three. Thou art the bread of life.
Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the Bible study today. We bless your name because we know that you are a good God. And as we come to you now, we're praying that you break the bread of life to every one of us in Jesus' name. And we pray that you open our eyes, that you touch our hearts, that you touch our spirit, and you enlighten us in your word in Jesus' name. We pray you keep us alive and active so that as your word is read and your spirit interprets the word to us, we pray, oh Lord, it will do something that is transforming in every heart, every life, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless every one of us today. So teach us that we will understand and we'll be able to teach and lead others in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Give me a good amen. amen. Thank you. God bless you. You can be seated. We come again to the study of the word of God. And tonight, we're in Revelation chapter 6. You know already, as we've been studying, that as we come to Revelation chapter 6, we're, already during, we're studying during the time of the great tribulation. Immediately after the rapture of the church, a period of the outpouring of God's wrath will begin for this world. Things will get worse before they become better on the earth. What that means is there will be the great tribulation force. And it's going to be a terrible time of suffering upon this earth. And that great tribulation will come first before the second coming of Christ. Please understand. The rapture first. After that, the great tribulation. After that, the second coming of the Lord. And then the millennial reign. And things are going to be wonderful during that millennial reign. That's what we mean by saying things are going to get worse in the great tribulation. Before things become better in the millennial reign of Christ. The Antichrist, the great deceiver, will unleash terror on this earth before Christ, the great deliverer, comes to establish a reign of peace on the reclaimed earth. With the rapture of the church, the age of grace gives way to the age of wrath and vengeance. The long period of grace comes to an end and a seven-year period of judgment and tribulation will then begin. I need to explain to those of us who might have forgotten or for those of us who might never have heard that the people of God, we children of God, were like ambassadors. And as ambassadors, the Lord takes care of his people. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading there in verse 20, it says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, we the Christians. We, those who are born again, we, the children of God, we who are washing the blood of the Lamb, we who are left in this earth only to testify of the Lord Jesus Christ and to tell people that Christ is coming again. We are ambassadors for Christ. Tell me now, what does a nation do when it declares war against another nation? What the nation will do is that the, that nation will withdraw all its ambassadors before war breaks out upon that enemy country. That's what the Lord is going to do. Before the Lord Jesus Christ comes with uh, this great tribulation, that is before he begins to open the seals, because the first opening of the seal, something happens. There's a false peace in the world, and then the second seal is broken, and there is war, because peace is taken away from the earth. And the third seal is broken, and there is famine, and the fourth seal is broken, and there is pestilence, and death, and devastation station all over the world but before all those seals are broken and all those devastations actually come upon this world the lord will withdraw his ambassadors if you have noticed in your bible you will know that before the flood came enoch had been translated into heaven not only that noah and the family the righteous people were safe in the ark after they were safe in the ark, then the flood came. Don't you remember the time of Lot? Before the fire came upon Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and the believing family, they were taken out of that land. In fact, there's something interesting here. If you look at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 
chapter 15. And you look at verses 6 and 7, uh, you find something very instructive here in verse 6 of 1 Samuel chapter 15. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites. Get you down, get away from the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites and so smote the Amalekites from Avila unto until thou comest to shore that is over against Egypt. Do you see what happened here? The Amalekites were to be judged by the Lord. And before that judgment came upon them, and the destruction came upon them, Saul told these other people, the Canaanites, he said, come out of there, because you don't belong to the Amalekites. You showed kindness unto the people of God when they were coming out of Egypt. That means then, do you think that Saul is going to be more righteous than Jesus Christ? Do you think that Saul is going to be more compassionate than the Lord Jesus Christ? No, of course not. Before the tribulation comes upon this world, we who are the people of God, the blood washed, redeemed people of God, will be raptured, will be taken away from this old world. And then it's only after we have gone that the tribulation will strike in this world. The seven sealed scroll being opened by Christ contains the judgment of God. On the world of sinners, as the seals are broken, a series of devastating judgments are released on the rebels on the earth. The breaking of the seals gradually reclaims the earth for Christ, the rightful owner. The first four seals, as, have, as we have studied last week, make uh, the first four seals make the world to witness and to experience. Number one, the false peace and false security. But then, when they will say peace, peace, and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them. That leads to the second one, which is war and uh, an unprecedented bloodshed upon the earth. And after that, you have the famine and total economic collapse. And then, number four, as the first seal is broken, you have pestilence and unimaginable deaths. In fact, as you look at the scriptures and it tells us the kind of the death that people will go through at that time, how many will lose their lives? Look at, just to remind you, Revelation chapter 6. And in verse 8, in Revelation chapter 6, verse 8, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed him, followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. I told you, and you must have seen it in your outline, if we say that the population of the world is six billion. That means that one quarter of that, during those uh, four seals being broken, 1.5 billion will die. That means 1 billion and 500 million people will die. Think about that. In all the wars of the world, if you think of even before Jesus Christ came to the time of the Bab time of Babylon and Middle Persia and Greece and the Roman Empire and the time of Christ and even the time AD 70 when General Titus came and even to the time of Hitler unto the present time. You don't have up to 300 million people that have died as a result of all the wars that have taken place in the earth. And yet, within that short period of the first half of the, of the tribulation, three and a half years, 1.5 billion. 1 billion 500 people, multiples, multiples of all the people that have ever died since the world began uh, through wars, all those people will die. That tells you then it's going to be a terrible time. In those, in the time of those four seals, the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit is withdrawn and unrestrained men bring evil and calamities on one another. During the period of the first four seals, those who believe in Christ, after the rapture of the church, will be killed in fierce persecution. And the Lord already told us in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 4, when the disciples asked, 
What are the signs of these things? The signs of the destruction of the temple, and the sign of your coming, and the signs of the end of the world. See the answer of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, because there will be deception. The Antichrist will deceive. And will deceive the world into thinking that he is the prince of peace. He has brought peace into the world. And there will be some little, little, little antichrist everywhere. Deceiving people in verse 5. For many shall come in my name. Saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. This is already the second seal. And see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. And nation shall rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. That's already number three. The third seal. Farming and then pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Already you have the fourth seal there. And then it says all these are the beginning of sorrows. That is the first four and a half, the first three and a half years which is half of the period of the great tribulation. It says it's just the beginning. Think about it. The death of 1.5 billion people with all that, all those catastrophes and calamities coming upon them is just the beginning of sorrows. But after you pass the line of the fourth seal, you're going on into the fifth seal. Then it says in verse 9, and then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. That is, there will be people at that time when they see all the wars and all the catastrophes and all the calamities taking place. They will begin to read their Bible. Of course, they know now that the church is gone. And the people preaching to them, they have gone. But many Bibles will still be around. And then also, there will be the 144,000 Jews that will be sealed. And those ones are the people that believe on the Lord. You'll read that later in chapter 7 of Revelation. And all those people will be witnessing and talking to people. And because of all those calamities happening, they'll be giving their lives to the Lord. But when they give their lives to the Lord, something is going to happen to them. They'll kill them. And when they kill them, they will go to heaven. And those are the people we are reading about today. You will see it as we read on. It says, as the fifth seal is broken, these matter tribulation saints are seen in heaven. They are praying to God to judge this world that is under the rule of the Antichrist. Judge the world with vengeance. The fifth seal introduces then the anticipation of vengeance as the second half of the great tribulation of the tribulation period is about to begin. And then it tells us, I want you to look at Luke chapter 21. In Luke chapter 21, Luke chapter 21 is uh, similar to Matthew chapter 24. And you will see, although the details are a little bit different, but uh, you will still see the details of the tribulation period there. As it tells us in Luke chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 7. Luke chapter 21 verse 7. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. Very similar to Matthew 24. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. And then in verse 9 it says, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by, it's not yet. Then shall he, then shall he, said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse different places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights. And great signs shall there be from heaven. Go down to verse 26. It says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the paths of heaven shall be shaken. Come back to verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. These are the days of 
vengeance. That's exactly what those people, the souls under the altar in heaven, they had been killed because of their faith, because of their obedience to the word of God, because of their testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason they were killed during that time of the terrible tribulation. And now they are asking for vengeance that God will avenge their blood upon the people on the earth. Those who kill them in persecution. You now come to Revelation chapter 6. I'm reading the text to you verses 9, 10, and 11. Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them. Not the bodies, not the bodies, the souls of them. I need to clear that for you. Because, you know, when Christ comes at the time of the rapture, the dead in Christ shall rise. What does that mean? It means that those who have died before, G before Jesus comes, before the rapture, their spirit and soul will join with their body. And then the complete man, body, soul, and spirit will go up. And we, which are alive, we shall be changed. That means our soul, our spirit, and our body. We shall be changed and cut up with them to be with the Lord in the air. So this is not talking about us. It's talking about the people who died during the time of the great tribulation. And when they died, their, their, bed, their bodies were still on the earth. Whether they buried them or they didn't bury them because they hated them. But their souls went to the Lord. And it is their soul now. These tribulation saints who died during that difficult period is their soul that is in the sight, is in the presence of the Lord. In verse 9, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them which that were slain for the watch of God and for the testimony which they held. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Oh, you say, what kind of prayer is that? Are we supposed to pray that God will punish our enemies? Understand, we are living at a different period. Ours is the age of grace. Ours is the age of love. Ours is the time where to love God and to love the brethren and to love our enemies. Ours is the time when we're saying like Jesus Christ, forgive them, Lord. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Why are we praying like that? Because we, the church, were living in the age of grace. But then when the rapture has taken place and the church is taken to heaven and then the persecution is on the earth, at that time of the great tribulation, it's not the age of grace, it's the age of wrath. It's the age of indignation. It's the age of vengeance. That's why their prayer matches their age. Their prayer matches the period in which they lived. And they were killed on the earth. And when they were killed on the earth, then their souls went to heaven. And they are praying according to the age in which they live. The age and the period and the time of vengeance. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth and white robes were given unto every one of them and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that shall be killed that is the killing the persecution the tribulation is not over yet and because it's not over yet their fellow servants and fellow brethren will still be killed that were uh, as they were should be fulfilled should be complete that's the reason we're looking at this and uh, we're looking at uh, three points as we look at the message today the title of the message is the supplication of martyred tribulation saints not all saints not the church it's not the supplication of the church this is not the supplication of the people of God who are living now. We are living in the age of grace. But the people who are martyred, who will be martyred during the great tribulation, the supplication of martyred tribulation saints. There are three points we are going to look at. Verses 10. 9, 10, and 11. Verse 9, that's point 1. Verse 10, that's point 2. Verse 11, that's point 3. Number 1, recognition of martyred saints in heaven. We need to recognize them. We need to know them. Who are these that prayed like this? Who are these that will meet in verse 9? And then point number 2, the request of martyred saints in heaven. The request of martyred saints in heaven. When we say martyr, that means those who are killed in martyrdom. 
They were killed for their faith. And then point number three is the reward and the rest of martyred, slain, killed saints in heaven. They are now in heaven. What's their reward? What's their rest? Come back to point number one. The recognition of these matter saints in heaven. We're looking at uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, remember it's Christ the Lamb that is worthy, the only worthy one to take the book, to take the scroll. And it's the only worthy one to be able to open and break the seals thereof. And then as he opens it, what John saw is the content of the scroll. Up to the point it had been opened. But he didn't read it. He saw it dramatized, demonstrated, acted out. And when he saw, when the fifth seal was opened, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. As you see this, it's telling us they're already in heaven. Because John was in heaven. The voice had called him at the beginning of chapter 4, come up hither. And then he was in heaven. He saw the throne of God. He saw the glory of God. And he saw the elders representing the whole church. And he saw the four beasts, the living creatures, the cherubims. And then he heard the song in heaven. And it was now in heaven he saw the altar. And as he saw the altar, because he had seen the temple also in that heaven, he now saw these people that were martyred, that were killed for their faith. And he tells us the reason why they were killed. Number one, because of the watch of God. For the word of God. Number two, because of their testimony. The testimonies which they held. These matters are a special group. And they are not the matters of the past generations who lost their lives in the past periods of persecution. I explained that to you already. Their persecutors and murderers were still dwelling on the earth during the latter part of the tribulation period. Because they themselves said, are you not going to avenge our blood? on the people that are dwelling on the earth. That means the people who killed them, the people who persecuted them, they were still alive during the latter part of the Great Tribulation. So you understand that these are special kinds of people. And then you will see that these people that dwelt on the earth, those who are just the wicked people, those who are following the Antichrist, that didn't like them holding on to the word of God, holding on to the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are matters who would lose their lives during the period of the first four seals, that is, in the first half of the tribulation. The other matters of the tribulation in the last half of the tribulation, they are referred to in verse 11 when God God said, rest a while, rest for a season until your fellow servants and your brethren that shall be killed until the number is completed and they are fulfilled. Why were they killed? It tells us, look at that verse 9 again. In verse 9, chapter 6, it says, when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for that word for means because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they held. As we look at the combination of those two things, the word of God, number one, and then the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, number two, you find that that thing had been referred to even in, the Revelation, in Revelation chapter one. Look at Revelation chapter one and look at verse two. It says, who bear record, talking about John himself, of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. You see John talking about himself. He says, there are two things about me. Number one is the word of God. And I bear record to the word of God. Number two is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, come down to verse 9. It says, I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. I was in the isle that is called Patmos. Number one, for the watch of God. Number two, for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Can you see there? Number one is the watch of God. Number two is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we look at the Lord Jesus Christ commending one of the churches and praising them because they were faithful. It tells us in Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. 
and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful matter who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth and the reason why Antipas was slain in that church it wasn't the time of the great tribulation because you know that persecution goes on all the time well when Stephen was killed it wasn't time of the great tribulation that's persecution and when James was killed in the early church by Herod that's the time of trouble trial persecution not great tribulation when Paul the apostle when he lost his life and even Simon Peter when he lost his life that was the persecution of the church that's why it says it shouldn't be surprised because of this fiery fiery persecution which is to try your faith in the case of this church here we're told in Pagamos that this Antipas he was killed just one person there but in the time of the great tribulation that kind of persecution will multiply and many 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 people will lose their lives because of their faithfulness to the word of god and because of the testimony which they hold it tells us uh, uh, chapter 12 revelation chapter 12 very very significant look at this revelation chapter 12 reading from verse 17 and a dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. You see that? For the word of God. The people that become saved during the time of that tribulation, because now they realize all the gospel they have been hearing before and they have rejected. And they see that now the church is gone. And they see that all these calamities upon the world, this is a tribulation. The great tribulation that Jesus spoke about, that those preachers were speaking about. And then they give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. The dragon, the antichrist, is it's going to be against them because they keep the commandments of God and they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Can you see that? Because of the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, which they keep, that's the reason why they're going to suffer that kind of faith. Remember two things, the word of God, the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20, I'm reading to you from verse 4. And I saw the and I saw thrones, and this day sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them. Remember again, the souls, the souls the souls because this is not the church now because the church I told you uh, those who died before the time of the rapture already they're risen and they have resurrection body soul spirit and body all united together and then those who make it at the rapture and they didn't die body soul and spirit we shall be changed and our body will put on an incorruptible body but in this case now we're looking at the people that died during the time of the great tribulation and their body was still on earth but it's their soul that goes up to heaven and it says in this verse 4 and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of jesus and for the word of God. It's during the great tribulation. They were beheaded. They were killed. They were slain. They were martyred. Because number one, the witness of Jesus. Number two, the word of God. Look at this. Which had not worshipped the beast. That's during the great tribulation. They refused to worship the beast. Neither his image. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. These ones, they refused. They said, well, we know this is a great tribulation. And whatever suffering is going to take, we're going to go through that suffering. And we're going to, we've missed the rapture already. And we know the church has gone. But whatever it will take, we're going to endure so that when Christ comes again, we'll be with him. And then he says, and they leave and reign with Christ a thousand years. They miss the rapture. But then during that seven year period, as they believe the Lord, their souls are going to heaven. And then when Christ comes, now they'll be able to come with the Lord and they'll reign forever. Ever, and they reign for a thousand years with the Lord Jesus Christ. These ones, what can we say about them? Number one, they were saved and they were righteous. Before anybody will be able to eventually get to heaven, number one, saved 
and righteous. Number two, steadfast and enduring. All the things that came to them during that time of the great tribulation, they said, ah, this is our last chance. This is our last chance. Once we take the mark of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, then it's gone forever. Whatever is going to happen, we're going to be steadfast and we're going to endure. Number three, they were sanctified and holy. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Whether it is this time or that time, whether it is now or then, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And they didn't do any other thing. Understand, understand that all that time, the Antichrist tormenting people and punishing people and looking for people, you cannot buy except you. Except you take the mark of the bees. You cannot do anything except you surrender and submit to the Antichrist. So all they were doing, they were searching the scriptures. They will be looking at the word of God that we miss the rapture. They told us at that time and we were careless this one whatever it will take we will not miss that's why they made sure they prayed what else are they going to do because of the suffering coming upon them they were sanctified and holy number four they were suffering and uncompromising they will not compromise yes suffering will be there for them uh, see it's easier for us now because the antichrist is not yet there now that is say you cannot go to church because the great revelation is not there yet now today it's very easy but if you are going to make it in the rapture number one you must be saved your sins must be taken away there must be a change of life not only that you must be steadfast and enduring because even though we're not at the time of the great tribulation now there is a cross to bear and there are difficulties to endure and there are things we are going to go through and jesus as multitudes followed him he turned back and he looked at them he said if any of you will be my disciple Take up your cross and follow me and deny yourself because whosoever will not deny himself, he will not be my disciple. At this time, number one, get saved. Number two, be steadfast. Number three, be sanctified because this is the will of God. Even your sanctification and God has called us unto holiness and not unto uncleanness. And Jesus, that he might sanctify the people, is suffered beyond without the gate. Let us come therefore outside the gate with him bearing his approach so that the blood of jesus will cleanse us on the inside he'll make us holy and then we keep on following and pursuing holiness without which no man shall see the lord and if suffering shall come whatever the suffering no job uh, or you're sick in your body or your parents or your people are denying you of something endure suffer and remain uncompromising because it's only that that will help you so that you'll see him on that day when he comes let's come back to these other people people who, was, who will be suffering at the time of the great tribulation they will be killed because of the word of God and for the testimony which they hold there will be intense persecution during the great during the periods of the first half or, and the second half of the tribulation persecution the persecution will be official it will be politically authorized and religiously inspired there will be worldwide hatred for those who get converted to christ and remain faithful to him the slaughter of such faithful saints will be massive and worldwide and the souls of the martyred saints will be received into heaven and they'll be ushered into the immediate presence of the lord i come to point number two the request of the martyred saints in heaven the request of the martyred saints in heaven. Revelation chapter 6. In Revelation chapter 6, we're looking at verse 10. Revelation chapter 6 verse 10. And they cried, that is, these martyred saints, that is, their souls under the altar. As you go back to verse 9. That is, these people who had been killed in persecution because of their commitment to the word of God. And because of their testimony that Jesus, Jesus only is the one that saves. We don't believe in the Antichrist. He is not, he is not the Redeemer. He is deceiving the people. Because of that testimony, they'll be killed. And then it says in verse 10. And he cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now, you, you, you say, how can people pray like that? Well, to start with, do you see that the Lord, God Almighty, he did not condemn their prayer? 
He did not say, why are you praying like that? He did not say, don't you remember Matthew chapter 5, that you should love your enemy and do good unto them that persecute you. He didn't remind them of that. Why? Because the period they are living, or the period they died, the period they lived and gave their lives to the Lord, is not the period of the church. It's after the church was gone. It was a period of God's anger and God's wrath and God's indignation and God's vengeance. And God himself said, at that time, during that period, I will put on a garment of vengeance. And I will take vengeance upon the people of the earth. Because that was their period in which they lived. That's why they prayed. And they prayed like that. Their prayer is addressed to the Lord. It may interest you, those who have studied Greek, they tell us that the Greek word that is used here when they said oh lord will you not avenge our blood it's the only one single time that word is used in the revelation and it is despot the one that has authority to judge the sovereign ruler and the sovereign lord they appeal to his attributes of holiness and truthfulness because he is holy he is called upon to deal or sin they said lord see we believed in you we held up to your word. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we testified that Jesus is our savior. And Jesus is the one sustaining us. Lord, that's why they killed us. Are you going to be looking like that and allow sin to just go on? Deal with sin. That's the prayer they were praying. They were saying, bring an end to sin's dominance on the earth. They said, sin, during the time of the great tribulation, sin will just run rampant. Remember, at the time of the great tribulation, the restraining influence, the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is taken away. So, sin will just be rampant. Crime will be rampant. Killing people, they'll be killing one another. And as they kill these people and then they go to heaven, they say, Lord, are you not going to put an end to sin's dominance on the earth? Not only that, number three, they'll say, will you not punish the Antichrist? that makes himself to be the Christ that is deceiving the people and then now at the fifth seal is already here and half of the time of the tribulation is already gone this is the time of real terrible abomination look at the antichrist having this abomination with the children of israel he has broken the covenant he made with them and he has is prospering through deceit and through craft or craftiness will you not judge the antichrist will you not judge all the sinners who rebel against the only one who has the right to rule and take vengeance on the antichrist loyalists who kill the servant of Christ and God's appointed people. And that, that's the reason. That's the reason why they were praying the way they prayed. Because and then they said, because you are holy, number one. Number two, because you are true. You are true. These saints of God in heaven, they were praying and petitioning God. And they were saying, God, will you not keep your promise? Didn't you say you will render vengeance to your enemies and reward them that hate you? Well, these people they killed us because they hate you. They killed us because they hate Christ. They killed us because of the word of God and the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do what you have said and render vengeance unto them. I want you to look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32. And you will see that uh, what they were praying is exactly what the Lord had said he will do at the appropriate time. This was the time now, the age of grace is over and because of that the age of vengeance has taken over in Deuteronomy chapter 32 reading from verse 35 for to me belongeth vengeance and recompense their food shall slide in due time for the day of their calamities at hand and the things that shall come upon them make haste those souls in heaven, that's the prayer they were praying. They said, God of vengeance, this area, this period and age of vengeance, take vengeance on them. In verse 41, if I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. In verse 43, rejoice, O ye nations, with his people. He will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. That is, during that time there will be mercy for the children of Israel, but for the people uh, that follow the Antichrist, there will be indignation and wrath and vengeance and uh, punishment coming upon them. In Psalm 79, Psalm 79, I'm reading to you from verse 10. 
Psalm 79, verse 10. It says, Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by revenging the, by the revenging of the blood of thy servants which is shed. And that is, uh, you see, uh, what the word of God is saying uh, is exactly what the souls under the altar, what they were saying, who had been killed during the time of the tribulation. They were saying, Lord, these people have killed us. The Antichrist is sitting in the place of God and he's saying there's no other God that he is God. And because of that, the people that follow the Antichrist, they believe him. And because they believe him, that's why they killed us. Look at 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, I'm reading to you from chapter 2. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, see the attitude and the behavior and the action or the activities of the, of the Antichrist at that time. In 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 2, I'm reading from verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except they are coming falling away false and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition that's the antichrist who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called god or that is worshiped so that he as god seated in the temple of god showing himself that he is god that's what the Antichrist will be doing at the time of the great tribulation. And then those who say, no, you are not God. We don't believe that you are God. We are the God of heaven. He created the whole universe. And the Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, is our savior. He killed those people. Because he is sitting on the throne. And he is sitting at the temple. And he's saying everybody should worship him. That there is no other God. He is God. And some people have the confidence and the conviction to say that the Antichrist is not God. Kill them. And so that's why these people, that's why they'll be praying. Not see the heathen. Already they are rejoicing. And they are saying, where is their God? All right. If the Antichrist is not God. And you say that you believe in a God in heaven. And you say there's a Messiah, there's a Redeemer, there's a Savior, there's Jesus Christ. And you believe the word of God, number one. And number two, the testimony of Jesus Christ. And now you are killed. Where is the consequence? That's why they were praying. And they were saying, oh Lord, don't let them say where, they, where is their God. Let him be known among the heathen in, the, in, the, in our sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servant which is shed. That's the reason they prayed, the, the way they prayed. We're told in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 63. I'm telling you, I'm showing you in the scriptures that it's a time when vengeance will come upon the people of the world, upon the people that follow the Antichrist. In Isaiah chapter 63, reading from verse 3, I have trodden the winepress alone. And of the people, there, shall, there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I, I, will, I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. The day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked. And there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me. And my fury, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger. And will I make them drunk in my fury. I will bring down the strength, their strength to the earth. And that is the period that these people lived. And that's the reason they were praying the way they prayed. Please come back to uh, chapter, chapter 6 of Revelation. As we come to this chapter 6 of Revelation, I was looking at these uh, people. Uh, what do we know about these people? These people were righteous people. And that's why they were praying. And that's why they were given white robes. Because they were given some reward. They were righteous. They were perfect. They were pure souls praying in heaven in anticipation of God's promised judgment on the wicked, sinful, murderous world. These righteous souls rightly desire that justice should be done and that the government of God should be vindicated as well as established. But there's a question now. Uh, you're wondering, these people that uh, lived at this time, that is during that time of the great tribulation, 
How is it? They were able to stand like that. Does that mean that there still be the grace of God available? Uh, uh, don't you know that God is a God of love as well as a God of judgment? And the nature of God is the nature of love. Even though he has the nature of holiness, he also has the, he has the nature of love. And anytime, anywhere, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You need to understand that uh, the problem is people calling on the name of the Lord. If they called on the name of the Lord, whether it is this time or that time or great tribulation time, whosoever, anytime, anywhere, any period shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's why those people, when he decided they will go through whatever they will need to go through so that they will be saved and they prayed to the Lord, that's how they got saved. And the grace of God was available unto them. In Revelation chapter 11. Revelation 11, reading from verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they shall be judged, and that day, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them, which destroyed the earth. That is, at that time, will be the time when God will rise up to destroy the people that destroy the earth. And he talks about the people that believe in the Lord, even small and great, small and great. You read it in that place. It talks of the servants of the Lord. It talks of the prophets. It talks of the saints. It talks of the people fearing the name of the Lord, small and great. That, that means that there will be some young people at that time too that they will say, we missed it. Mommy is gone in the rapture and we didn't make it. And those some people that were careless and they said, we know about the rapture and daddy has gone in the rapture but we are not able to make it by know now that it's going to be a time of suffering. And if they have cases, if they have literature, if they have Christian materials that they read before when daddy and mommy were still alive, they'll look at them and they will say, God, you must help me. I was careless. I should have gone with daddy and mommy in the rapture, but I didn't go. But this time, I don't care what's going to happen. This seven-year period, I will endure at least. Whatever I go through during this seven-year period cannot be compared with hell, which will be forever and ever. That's why even some young people at that time, they'll be able to make it too. But it's better to make it now. It's easier to make it now because the tribulation is not here yet. And the trouble is not as tense now as difficult and the persecution is not as intense now as it will be at that time. In verse 19 and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his covenant and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail in Revelation reading from chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16 reading from verse 5. Revelation chapter 16 reading from verse Five. It tells us here, and I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, thou art uh, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged those. That is, when God begins the vengeance and it begins the judgment, even the angels will praise God and the saints will praise God. And of course, the martyred saints too, they'll be glorifying God because God is responding to their request and their prayer that he should judge the people that are on the earth. In verse 6, and for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Uh, you see then what judgment will come upon them. It says in verse 7, and I had another out of the altar. Say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. In chapter 18, chapter 18 of Revelation reading from verse 20 and verse 24. Chapter 18, verse 20, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and be and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Verse 24, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that was slain upon the earth. It tells us in chapter 19, verse 2, For true and righteous are his judgments. He will judge. He will avenge the blood of his saints. And then the people of God will be praising and glorifying the Lord. True and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great war, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. If you look at First Thess Second Thessalonians chapter one, Second Thessalonians chapter one, in anticipation 
of the judgment that will come upon the people of the world who are even tormenting and uh, persecuting the people of God now. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 5, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous sin with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. That is a sin. Are you going through a persecution now? Rest with us. You have some trouble now. Rest with us. Why is he saying that? He said, if you know what's going to take place during the great tribulation, whatever trouble you have now, you'll just sit on an armchair, rocking chair, and singing amazing grace as sweet the sun. Because whatever you are going through now cannot be compared with the smallest fraction of what people will go through during the time of the great tribulation. Therefore, whatever it is, persecution, or trial, or hunger, or joblessness, or sickness, or whatever it is, pressure from the world or punishment, whatever it is whatever you go through now, it's nothing in comparison with the great tribulation that even the people who are eventually saved during that great tribulation what they will go through, that's why to you who are troubled, rest with us, there's nothing to worry about when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, now when that great tribulation, when it, when it comes and the Lamb of God will take the book out of the hand of the ancient of days, out of the hand of the one that sits upon the throne and Christ then will begin to open those seals and it will come in flaming fire, verse 8, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished eventually even those people when they are punished and they die, they will go to everlasting lake of fire who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints that is at that time he'll be glorified in his saints and be admired to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day so you have seen the reason why the souls were there under the altar and you have seen their request and their prayer let us see now the response of the lord unto them as they cried unto the lord saying that he will avenge their blood that brings me to point number three the reward and the rest of martyred saints in heaven the reward and the rest of martyred saints in heaven. I'm looking at verse 11 of Revelation chapter 6. It says, And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled, should be completed until the number of those who will be martyred for their faith until their number will be complete, will be fulfilled. Here, the matter, these martyred saints already they are rewarded because you can see there in verse 11 and white robes were given unto every one of them. White robes given to them. It's an emblem of divine approval of their lives and their testimonies is it's like the lord telling them you have not died in vain you did right you believed in god even though there was an impostor there was a deceiver there was the antichrist on the earth sitting in the temple making himself god you said no and you were uncompromising and it was the approval of god a divine approval on their lives and their testimony that you did well even though you suffered even though you were persecuted even though you died for your faith have this white robe while you are waiting for the rest of your brethren and your fellow servants that will be killed as you are being killed not only that this dazzling white robe given to them on arrival after their martyrdom was a sign of dignity now they were dignified now they were dignified because of the indignity and because of inhuman treatment that had been given to them now they were dignified and they they, they were uh, they were having the, the it was a sign of dignity and purity and honor they were honored and because of the honor upon them the lord was saying have this one you're still going to have more rewards but this is a pledge of your future blessedness this is just the deposit of the things that you are going to have 
Well, if it happens to those who will be saved during the Great Tribulation, how about us today? Why don't we endure whatever we're going through, whatever the problem, whatever the persecution, and know that the Lord himself, when he shall come, he will give us reward. And then there will be a wonderful rest. They are pleaded that they will be vindicated at once. But they were told, no, you cannot be vindicated at once, but you will now have to wait because that desire of vindication cannot actually be affected until the other people have come in who are to make up the number of matters like you, who are to complete the number of matters. Then God will act and his wrath will be poured upon the Christ rejecting wicked world who hate and kill the righteous holy faithful servants and saints of God. Now, let's see that these people, actually there will be so many, that these the people when the Lord said, look at this in verse 11, when the Lord said that they shall rest yet for a while, for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren shall be killed as they were until the number shall be complete. When he talks about the number being complete, look at the rest of them in Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, reading from verse 9. And after this, after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number. Now understand, we're looking at chapter 6. Already in chapter 6, you know that at the beginning of chapter 6, the tribulation was there already. And the, seal, uh, the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal. Tribulation has started already. And the fifth seal, already there are people who have died and they have gone to heaven. As a result of the terrible pressure and persecution and tribulation and, and the martyrdom taking place in the time of the great tribulation. When you move on to chapter 7, more people too are there that have been killed for their faith. These are the people that the Lord said, you wait for a season. Wait for a while until the others too will be killed the way you were killed. In that verse 9 it says that they, num that they couldn't even number them of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues and they stood before the throne and before the Lamb and they were clothed with white robes. Did you see that? White robes. The same white robes that those souls were given in chapter 6. These people, as they were dying, as they were dying, as they were dying during the great tribulation, and they were, and they were saying, we missed the rapture. We are not going to miss this one. This is our last chance. If we take the mark of the beast, if we follow the Antichrist, and if we accept him to be God, that's final for us, and that's eternity in the lake of fire. Whatever will happen, let what will happen, happen. This time, we are not going to miss our chance and there will be many of them in many nations and tongues and people and kindreds and he will stand before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands they are victorious in verse 10 and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God we seated upon the throne salvation to our God we seated upon the throne no matter how fierce the persecution may be one day it will end it may be dark now and a time of weeping and sorrow for them, it may be for a, for a time, but it will come to an end. And even though there is crying and there is sighing, but there will be singing and joy, rejoicing, even at the end. And no matter what we are going through, it will end, it will end. No matter the pressure, no matter the persecution, no matter the suffering, no matter the pain, it will end. Just stay there and you will sing at last. That's why they were singing and shouting to the Lord with a loud voice. Salvation to our God. We sit us upon the throne and up and unto the Lamb. And all and all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts. They fell before the throne on their faces and they worshiped God. They worship God with these people. They glorified God that even in the time of wrath, God remembered mercy. That even in the time of the great tribulation, these uncountable, innumerable number of people that they could still even hold on and be saved and be steadfast and be sanctified and be uncompromising even in suffering that they were giving glory to God saying in verse 12, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Let me hear you say, Amen. And then one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these, John? Who are these people? Who are arrayed in white robes? 
John, can you tell us? Can you tell me where where are they? Where did they come from? In verse 14, and I said, John said, Sir, thou knowest. How can I how can I tell? John was just looking at them. Millions and millions and millions of people. And he looked at them like a sea of heads that you could not count. And then one of the elders said, John, do you know who these are? And he said, Thou knowest. And he said, These are they which came out of out of what? Tell me out loud. Out of great tribulation. Out of great tribulation. That is, during that great tribulation, there will be people that will say, huh, whatever will happen, whatever the Antichrist will do, let him do. Let me ask you, if the grace of God will be, so, will be there when the church is gone, when there will be no easy Bible study like this because the police officers and the intelligence of the Antichrist will come and destabilize everything. And they will not allow retreat. And they will not allow conference. And they will not allow congress. And yet, there will be people that will say, let come what may. Whatever will happen. We will remain in the Lord. Now that we miss the first chance, we are not going to miss this. I'm asking you. If there are some people that will stand at that time, when the fire will be burning, when they will be killing people from this house, from this house, and you will be hearing their cry. You will be hearing their, uh, their, their screaming. When they are killing them, because of the faith and some people will still say i am going to stand i'm going to remain with the lord because i know if i miss this chance it's hellfire lake of fire forever and ever if they will be able to stand and we have them reaching here i about you what are you going through that you cannot stand what's happening to you that you cannot stand What's the pressure? What's the persecution that you cannot stand? What's the trouble that you cannot stand? What's the famine? What's the hunger that you cannot stand? No wife, no husband, no children. Uh, I'm facing this in the office. I'm facing that somewhere. Is that why you cannot stand? And if you miss it at this time, when things are easy, you cannot make it now. Nobody can promise you that at that time, when the church is gone, when there is no Bible study, when there is no encouragement or no counseling from anywhere, who will promise you that you in particular, that if you miss it now that you can stand. But these were the people that he said, these are they which came out of great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That tells us then a wonderful thing that will happen at that time. That's why it says, and you say they shall rest a while. Rest a while. And that word rest follows through on that word. In Revelation chapter Revelation chapter uh, 14 verse 13. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth ah there's a time in here now there's a time in here now it's saying blessed are the dead which die they die in the lord from henceforth that means it's still during the time of the great tribulation and yet it says those who will hold on and those who will be firm and those who will be steadfast if they die in the lord during that time it says blessed are they yea says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. That is, they will be preaching to other people too. You cannot evangelize now because, you see, in my place of work, if I evangelize, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. During the time of the great tribulation, the people that get saved, they'll be so compassionate upon other people. They'll be encouraging them. Don't worry what you're going to go through. At least I'm going through it too. You see what is on me. And you say there's no food. I've not been able to buy food. I've not been able to give food to my children because I'm not going to take the mark of the bees. And if you don't take the mark of the bees, you know they're not going to allow us to buy or sell. But never mind. Even if I die of hunger, I'm going to be with the Lord. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord from henceforth. They rest from their labors and their works and their testimonies do follow them. That's why we're told in Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah. Chapter 26, reading from verse 20, it says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee, and hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. It says, uh, at that time, uh, the people of God, that is the Israelites, the Lord will be talking to them, there's your chance, there's your chance. It is a time of Jacob's trouble, but you can come in the closet, and you can come in your chambers, and you can shut your door, and you can hide 
hide yourself for a little moment that period of seven years in comparison with the age of grace the period of grace that's a little moment until the indignation be overpassed and then it says for behold the lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity and the earth shall also disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. At a time when uh, those people, when they eventually die, uh, during the time of the tribulation, it will be a time of rest for them because then they rest from all the trouble, all the trial, all the persecution they would have gone through. In Job chapter 3, Job chapter 3 verse 17, there the wicked cease from troubling. That is, when those people, during the great tribulation, and eventually saved, sanctified, steadfast, they suffered, but then they remain true. Eventually, when they die, the wicked cease from troubling. And there, the weary be at rest. Those who have been weary, almost tired, almost giving up, but they said, I'll endure more. I, and I'll endure a little bit more. And eventually, it says, the weary, they have rest. And then in verse 18, there the prisoners rest together. And there, they hear not the voice of the oppressor, that is, the Antichrist. And the emissaries or the servants of the Antichrist, they do not hear the voice anymore. And uh, that's why the Lord is telling us now, we're not in the time of the great tribulation yet. And uh, whatever little sin, whatever minor sin, whatever slight sin we're going through, uh, let's endure so that when the rapture will take place, we'll go with the people of God in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 9, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, there remains therefore a rest to the people of God. I'm coming, I've come back now to the age of grace. I've come back now to the time of the church. I've left the time of the tribulation. I've come back to the time you are living now, to the time we're living together now, and that we are looking forward. We're looking forward to the time of the rapture. We're looking forward to when Christ will come. Because it says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself. So that where I am, there you will be also. We are anticipating, we are waiting, we are expecting the time of the rapture. Which can take place any time from now. We are saying there remains therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that, for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Let us endeavor, therefore, to enter into that trace. Let us endeavor and strive, whatever it will take. If you are not born again, endeavor, get born again. And if you are born again, but you lost the salvation because of the carelessness and the things of this world, hurry up and come back into the kingdom of God and come back into the grace of God. If you are saved, and uh, but you are almost, almost, almost dying, almost giving up because of the temptation you think is too much for you, and you think you are going to yield why don't you come alive again and let revival restoration come into your life and if you are not sanctified and you know the adamic nature is within and you know without holiness no man shall see the lord are you going to just relax and be careless and go through the great tribulation it's going to be a terrible time why don't you at this time say whatever it will take let us labor therefore to enter into that trace lest any man fail fall after the same manner of unbelief as you come back to the lord please remember little persecution will come they can make jest of you they might even do whatever harass your life but it's a little thing it's nothing to worry about it's nothing to be compared with what you go th through the great tribulation what you will go through and therefore just smile just smile away the problem and just smile away the pain and just relax and just serve the Lord whatever is happening around you because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 reading from verse 10 it says blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are ye when men shall revile you what else can they do abuse you insult you revile you call you bad names but blessed are you when men shall revile you and shall persecute you you 
They might deny you of some things. That is your right. Because you will not compromise. Because you will not sin with them. They will persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake. They may tell lies against you. It may be painful. But just bear the pain. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. So for so persecuted they. The prophets which were before you. The Lord is coming. And by the grace of God. I will not miss that rapture. I said, I will not miss that rapture. If you are not going to miss it, the Lord is telling you that there is something you have to do. If you are not born again, you must be born again, get saved, and live a righteous life. Not only that, be steadfast in the Lord and be enduring. Whatever comes your way, bear your cross. And bear your cross with a smile. Just go through a life rejoicing in the Lord. Be steadfast in the Lord and be sanctified and holy. Because without that sanctification, without that holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Don't play games and don't gamble with your soul. You must be sanctified and be holy. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And even if you are suffering, remain uncompromising. Make up your mind. I will not fall. Make up your mind. I will not look back. Make up your mind. Whatever is happening, when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ, when they rise up and the saints of God are gathered home, I'll be there with them. Will you be there? Rise up and tell the Lord. Rise up and tell the Lord. You, you want to serve the Lord. You want to be saved. You want to be a real child of God. You don't want anything to hinder you. You don't want anything to debar you from getting to heaven. If you are not born again, this is your chance. Call upon the name of the Lord so you can be born again. If you know that you are backsliding, call upon the name of the Lord. Because the Lord has record of the people that are really standing. Are you saved? Are you living a righteous life? If the Lord shall come today, if the Lord shall come tonight, will you go in the rapture with the people of God? Repent. Turn away from your sin. Turn away from your sin. The Lord is giving you another chance right now that you'll turn away from your sin. The Lord is giving you another chance right now. You make a right about turn. You make a right about turn. Are you going to allow yourself to go through the great tribulation? Are you going to allow yourself to miss the rapture because of little, little things? Little stealing, little lie, little anger, little fighting, little, uh, little immorality. Are you going to allow yourself to miss the rapture because of this kind of carelessness? Be saved and become righteous. And even though you might be suffering persecution, endure. Be steadfast. Be steadfast and be unmovable. Don't allow anything, anything in the world, anything thrown to you by the devil. Anything thrown by the flesh, anything by the world, don't allow that to make you to shift from your ground. Be steadfast and unmovable. Ask for the Lord to give you more grace. Ask for the Lord to give you more grace. Ask for the Lord to give you more grace. And be sanctified. And be sanctified. Remember, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Remember, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of scraps and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. Holiness, holiness, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Are you sanctified? Are you sanctified? Are you holy? Are you pure? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. And are you uncompromising? Whatever the suffering, are you uncompromising? Whatever the challenge, are you uncompromising? Whatever the pressure on you, are you uncompromising? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the righteous man is sought. And let him come, let him return. And return to our God because he will abundantly pardon. This is your chance. This is your chance. This is your chance. If you cover your sin, you will not prosper. But if you confess and forsake, you'll have the mercy of God. Be ready, prepare to meet the Lord your God.